there are a lot of little things like this in this level that you kind of have to, uh... Ugh. You have to visit areas a couple of times with, the, with uh, Mumbo's form as well as your traditional form to get all of the goodies. Like here, there's a honeycomb piece, but we can't get it because we're too big. Again, we can't fit, so we're going to have to come back to that. Oop, wrong way. But yeah, I think the whole story between the develop the, behind the development of all these games was was fairly interesting. And the other interesting thing to note is that Banjo Kazoo Banjo Tooie, basically all Banjo Tooie is is the leftovers of Banjo Kazooie dressed up and with a lot of the game mechanics cleaned up. They were working on most of the stuff that's in Banjo Tooie. They were working on for Banjo Kazooie and realized that they just couldn't fit it all in one game. So they basically stalled. They basically released what they had for Banjo-Kazooie. Obviously, they had to put it out fairly quickly after Diddy Kong Racing. Even though Diddy Kong Racing did buy them a st substantial amount of time, they still needed to release games relatively close together. And then they 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 kept working on everything that they hadn't quite finished for this game, cleaned it up, you know, tidied it up, got it, all the mechanics tightened and everything else, and then decided to release it as a full game, Banjo-Tooie. And that's the story. There's a... There... I, I would recommend if you want to hear kind of more about the story, there are plenty of articles out there about it. You can also, there's um, interviews with some of the rare guys that um, I've watched that you can go and watch that are always interesting. I love hearing about game development in this era. Again, I, th I do think it was a bit of a golden era for rare because they were, they had all of Nintendo's funding, all of Nintendo's money, all of Nintendo's backing. Nintendo was very encouraged with everything that they were doing and you know, there's just so much to this game and so much into the, so much behind the game. Okay, so now we're actually in the main area of the mansion. And to there's a Jiggy on the table you could kind of see there. Uh, to get to him, we have to do this. So yeah, that ghost, uh, Grunty's minion, he hates her. Now he does anyway. And this is actually Grunty's house. You can I don't know how well you're able to tell with all the pictures of her around, but you can kind of see some pictures of other people uh, lined up against the walls that kind of give you a little bit more of insight into who Grunty is. Obviously, over here, we have uh, Brentilda, her sister. Then over there is a picture of... Oh, what is that? I think that's one of the... Like, the thing... Oh, yeah, that's Dinkpot. That's her... Uh, her cult, her personal cauldron, and then that is Klungo, her number one right hand minion, whom we only saw in the introduction to the game, and who only otherwise appears in the game over screen of this game. That is Mumbo, pre transformation. The story behind Mumbo is that he actually taught a lot of Grunt what Grunty knows about magic, and she ended up betraying him casting a spell that turned his face from like a mask into an actual skull and now he's trying to get revenge on her by helping us out and then over there we have grunty's broomstick it was just a broomstick nothing else about that. um but yeah that's kind of you know gives some insight into the some of the a couple of the background characters in this game there's really not all that much more to it i mean you see you see you find out a little bit more about a couple of these characters uh dingpot and uh Mumbo mainly uh, later on in this game and also in uh, Banjo Tooie, but aside from that, there's really not all that much more to this uh, to this game's characters and, and such. Um, do -do 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 -do. Let's go ahead and head out because we got that jiggy. Basically, what would this jiggy? I kind of bypassed it, but basically, what would happen is that if you walk into this room, these floorboards all creak. I don't know. Well, you can kind of hear that as I'm walking around. But the ghost would wake up and you wouldn't be able to grab the jiggy. So you have to actually come down the fireplace and jump across the chairs and reach him without touching the floor to be able to get in to be able to grab it. Basically, you know those old games that you used to play as a kid where the floor would be lava? You're basically doing that. You can get these uh, annoying skeleton baddies. Um, these guys are another example of the guys that you can't kill without Wonder Wing. 
so, um, I don't know. You can just kind of ignore them, I guess. They're not really that big of a threat. I think that there's actually a room that we missed. Yeah, there's, there's another room here on the mansion that we actually missed. Why is the camera pan out there? That's a really odd choice. But yeah, there's a room in the mansion here that we actually missed that um, I should have gone in that had an, a Jinjo in it that I'm going to have to try to find. Um, I don't think it's here on the ground floor. I think it's on either the second or the third floor. Maybe I'm wrong. Let's come around here. Um, we also have to go and back and finish the cathedral. I just... Re uh, chapel? Vicarage? I don't know exactly what to call it. Here we go. This is the room I was thinking of, right? No, it's not. It's a basic collectible room. There's one area that's... My brain is failing me. Nothing new. We had this all through the last episode. We're going to have it all through this episode as well. I've already gone in this one, right? Yes. This is the one with the broken floor. Um, it's probably on the third floor then, maybe? Let's check. Because I know we already went in one room on the third floor, but it's worth... Yep, there it is. Okay. I thought so. I, I knew that there was another room. I just couldn't remember... Ah, couldn't remember exactly where it was. Traversing this house isn't difficult. Um, obviously, you can slide, but since you you can kind of jump once you start falling, just to kind of catch yourself to make sure you don't fall all the way down. Okay, that was nice. There we go. All right. Also, you don't have to do any flying in this level, so that's nice. It gives us a chance to stock up on feathers. The Jinjo's up here. Um, that's, that was nice. Um, yeah, this is Grunty's bedroom, just so you know. And we can go ahead and grab the Jinjo. Get all but the blue one already. Wow. Wow, we are really getting on there. This level is, uh, going by fairly quickly. And this ghost, um, they kind of say stuff and get it, come at us, but Wonder Wind kills it fairly easily. Um, is there anything else in this room? No. I used to think that there was something in that treasure chest, kind of like the treasure chest in Treasure Trove Cove, but there's not. So, don't even, uh, don't even bother. Okay, um, what else do we need to do? Okay, we need to go and do the chapel, and we need to go find Mumbo. So, let's go this way. Which way? Let's do the chapel first, because we haven't done that yet. Um, so, let's, we gotta head up here. To actually get inside the chapel, we've gotta do some stuff first. Yeah. Um, so this is a mini game area. It's kind of this is gonna remind you a little bit of a game in Freeze Easy Peak, or not Freeze Easy Peak. Um, and this character, I still don't understand this character at all. Tumblr the Mighty. I guess it's supposed to be like a drink tumbler. Basically, the idea is you have to spell out. Banjo Kazooie, similar to the puzzle in Treasure Trove Cove, but um, with the gimmick of a, a of a completely invincible ghost coming around here and uh, you know trying to kill you. And J. Whoops, missed me. And uh, O, and then you can see obviously if you run over the wrong things, you get hurt. Uh, Banjo has a nice little surfing animation. A Z is up in the top corner. Z. Oh, and yeah, and the ghost will knock you off and obviously lose time. O. The other O is down here, I believe. O, O, I. But again, they give you plenty of time, so as long as you don't suck, you should be fine. There we go. It kills the ghost. The puzzle is solved. Tumblr. What does he do? Does he just fade out? Yep, he just fades out, and he drops a jiggy for us, so that's nice. There's also four notes that in here that you want to make sure to collect, otherwise you're going to have to come back in here. Not that that's big of a deal, that big of a deal, but uh, 
still, it's a thing. It's a thing with the stuff in the thing. Okay, then we come around the back of the shed, and there is a spring pad that allows us to get up on top of the shed. Whoops. And then we can walk around up here, grab the four notes, and also... An Ecom Token. And that's the one that I was thinking of when I said that there was... I thought that there was one in the light in Clanker's Cavern. That's the one I was thinking of. I wasn't... I'm, I'm still not exactly sure why I was thinking of it back then, but... I, I remember there being one somewhere in the middle of a, a pool of light like that, and I guess that was the one I was thinking of. There's a Jinjo up here in the middle of the fountain. Um, you have to get it using the spring pad, and that is the last Jinjo! Sweet! We already got all five Jinjos. Alright, and we've got five Jiggies as well. Um, and we're getting up there in notes. So this level, this level isn't going by quite as fast as I thought, but it's going by fairly quickly. Uh, the water here won't hurt you, but the, uh, the tentacle thing will, so. I guess it's supposed to be like an, a tree root, but it doesn't look or act at all like a tree root, so. I'm confused. Yeah, I guess you can come back out that way towards the main area of the mansion, which we're going to want to make sure to remember because... That opens... We open the door to the chapel by hitting that switch, but we only have 14 seconds to get there, so... It's a good thing we got the speedy shoes in the last level, eh? And I just remember that I never got the, uh... Last Jiggy and Freeze Easy Peak. Oh well. Crap. I think that's actually one of the first times that I've ever failed that. I honestly don't remember having ever failing that before. It's not hard. I mean, it's you have to be fast, but it's not that hard. It's not as, like it's the thing that we had to do in the overworld. You know what, while I'm here, I'm just going to come up here and grab all this stuff up from the top of the chapel. Because I don't, I don't think there's any way that you can get into the chapel aside from the door. I don't, uh, and obviously the stained glass room. But aside from that, I don't think there's any other way to get in. It's not like one of these clock faces is open or anything, right? Oh, why did... <sighs> Did it again. I didn't let go of Z, and yet it somehow canceled out the, uh, the thing. Darn it. I wish this were a little easier to get up on. So I'm having to jump on this, jumping over, and then doing this, and doing this. Doing this, doing this. I'm still holding down Z, so don't, uh, better not cancel me out of it this time, game. Okay, so there is another way to get into the chapel. I was wrong, but it only takes you up here, so it doesn't, uh, it's not like it you, allows you to skip the, uh, skip the running challenge. And there's also the world's smallest shock jump pad. Oh, crap. I'm down to two health. Meet you guys back up at the top. Alright, I'm back. So we got the last note up here that brings us up to 70. We have the world's smallest shock jump pad that it's really hard to notice unless you turn the camera just the right way. That allows you to jump up on top of the steeple and grab a jiggy. Now we're going to want to reach the ground again very carefully because otherwise I'm going to die because I've only got two health. And if I fall from this height, I'm pretty sure I will lose two health cells. So... Okay. 
Ouch. Okay, I'm down to one. If I die this far into the level, I am going to be majorly, majorly ticked off. So I'm going to have to find some health. Okay, good. There's a honeycomb thing right over there. There's another honeycomb piece just lying around. I wonder where that came from. Must have been from something I killed and I don't even remember that it was there. Probably a ghost or something like that. There we go. Okay, so. We could go visit Mumbo. Do I want to do, do that or do I want to go and... Uh... No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go and... Fit. We're going to go do the chapel now. I've made up my mind. I really like this music. I just realized just how good it is. I mean, I, I, I always kind of knew how good it was, but I'm just remembering how good it was when I'm, now that I'm listening to it again. Of course, it is, like I said before, it is very quiet, so I can't really hear a lot of the nuances to the music. I just kind of hear the big bombastic parts, but it's still, yeah, it's still pretty good. Now I'm not gonna make it. There. Forget you. Okay, um, it, let me take a quick detour over here on my way back to the switch. Okay, there are some notes. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna want to collect those. Um, do, 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 do. is there anything else I can do here? I don't think so. You don't want to jump in this water, incidentally. It's, uh, I believe it's poisoned or something like that. I can't remember exactly what they what they say about it. It's like got piranha in it. Basically, it's like the water in places like Bubble Gloop Swamp, where if you, if you walk in it, you'll die or lose health. So, um, I do remember one time I was playing this game way back probably one of the first times I ever played this game, I got up to this level and I was running around in this level and I realized I was almost dead and I was trying to jump, I was trying to do this platforming section, this exact section, and uh, I almost died I a couple of times. I was just like running back and forth and I was like going in and out of the water and I was down to like one health and I had gotten like, I was like at where I am now, where I have a substantial amount of notes, I have substantial amounts of, you know, all the items in the level, and I didn't want to die because, you know, if you die, then all of that resets, and basically your entire work has been wasted, so. Let's go ahead and uh, try to make it to the chapel on time. Gotta make it to the church on time. There we go. Two seconds to spare. Excellent. Make it to the church on time. So obviously, just like every other area in this game, this uh, is much bigger on the inside than it is on the outside, but almost to a comedic degree at this point. Oh, and the uh, only uh, parishioners here are uh, ghosts, so don't worry about it. You know, you're not offending anyone by coming into this church and, you know, causing havoc. The only people here are ghosts, and they want to kill you anyway, so not a big deal. Also... One of my favorite characters in this game, underrated character, the ghost hand, who plays music. Motsand plays his organ with ease, but can you follow him on the keys? And I wonder if you guys will be able to recognize exactly what we are playing. Basically, this is supposed to be Simon, but it's much easier than Simon because all you literally all you have to do is follow him as he plays and play the exact same notes that he does right after he does so you know you're not gonna forget the only time you ever might possibly lose this is if he does like um one that's more or less off screen so what he's playing i don't know if you guys are musically inclined enough to realize this, but whoops. The tune that he's playing is actually this level's theme, Slowed Down, and that's also the same exact song that's on the sheet of music that he's got up there. They, they just basically textured that sheet of music to, to, with the sheet music that they used when they composed this level's uh, theme. Darn it. 
I did not hit that. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to go too fast and being sloppy. That's why I'm screwing up so much. See? See, I like Motsand. He's he's just kind of there. He's not a he's not a bad guy. He's just a, a musical ghost who likes to play songs. So we can go ahead and head up here. Oh, I actually want to kill this guy because uh, he'll give me health. So, um, I believe yeah, there's an extra life back behind the organ if you want to grab it. I'm I'm just here for the jiggy, so I'm, I don't care. Um, and this is also one of the only areas in this level where you actually. Whoops. You actually do fly, aside from actually inside the main part of the mansion. There's a flying pad in one of the um, little uh, incense burners along the walls that you have to get to to reach a bunch of items that are up in the rafters. So, Because this this area is fairly large. This is a, a massive area. This is, this is about as big as the main area of the mansion itself. Look at it. So there's a, you could see the flying pad as I was looking. It's right over here in this uh, incense burner. We can go ahead and jump in it. Incense burner, candle holder, whatever the heck it is. Uh, and fly up into the rafters. There is, uh, there are a couple of important items. A honeycomb piece being one of them up here, as well as the witch switch. So definitely don't want to skip coming up up here. Definitely don't want to. So see there? That's why we smashed the, the eye before while we had the flying pad because otherwise there's no way to break that and no way to reach that jiggy so you, you would have to fly twice which is means you would have to do that flying little flying thing uh you, the running thing to reach the flying pad twice so there's our uh, next honeycomb piece take that guy down and i think that's all the items here um i'm not sure I want to actually grab this Wonder Wing Feather. Oh, uh-oh, 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 I might be dead here. 